Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar with Fenex Resources. I'm Danica Warburton, the Principal of Investability, and I'm joined today by um, the Managing Director of Fenex, Rob Riley. Uh, today, Rob is going to walk us through the June quarterly activities, and then we're going to open it up to a Q&A. So I'll hand over to you now, Rob. Thank you, Danica, um, and welcome to everyone that's on the on the call or will be listening uh, to the recording later on. Um, Fenex had another great quarterly in, in, our, in our view. We had some very solid um, production results. We sold about 344,000 tonnes of, uh, of iron ore for the quarter, uh, consisting of about 59% of that fines product and the 41% lump product. So still well above our feasibility study assumptions of 75-25. Uh, so it was a good, good result. Uh, for fiscal 22, we sold 1.34 million uh, tonnes of material and so far project to date we're up just slightly over 1.8 million tonnes which is equivalent to about 1.75 million dry tonnes so uh, good solid performance so far given that we've only been going for less than six quarters um, and also we have another cargo being loaded at the moment so uh, we, we just missed um, uh, the the opportunity to get an extra extra cargo in during um during the June quarter, but it means that we're starting the September quarter with a solid foundation. The grade at Iron Ridge continues to differentiate Fenex from, from most of the others. Uh, our average grade for our fines product now is regularly above 62%, which is a benchmark um, grade for, for, for iron ore pricing. And it's a, it's a threshold that many, many uh, producers uh, cannot meet at the moment, and even the majors are struggling to make make that grade. So it really differentiates us from from other players. And of course, our lump product uh, uh, averaged sixty three point six percent, and has regularly been over sixty four percent. So very very solid results there. Um, we generated fifteen million dollars of operating cash flow for the quarter. Um, not quite up to the lofty heights of, uh, of last quarter, but we did have to pay $11 million of cash tax um, to keep the Australian government going. So um, all, all, um, all good and it helps to build our franking credit balance up uh, as well. And we did highlight that we will now be moving to quarterly instalments with our, with our tax. So uh, uh, we anticipate paying around $4.3 million of tax per quarter. Um, for for the upcoming few quarters quarters so um, uh, when you add that 11 million dollars onto the 15 26 million of, of of operating cash flow is still a very very solid business given um, where we started from and, and what our market capitalization is at the moment um, the June quarter was also a a, a, a milestone time uh, where we sort of made a significant acquisition um, by consolidating the Phoenix New Hall haulage business. That will immediately see us reduce C1 costs by quite a substantial amount, around about $10 a tonne, all things being equal. And it not only will it uh, benefit our cost profile, make us more resilient to the iron ore price, it will also give us operational flexibility and it makes uh, synergistic benefits of um, of an acquisition that we're starting to really look at closely now, um, really uh, flow through to our shareholder value. So it was a key driver of uh, of making that um, that acquisition. And you know we've still got all the management in place at, at uh, Phoenix New Hall, so we expect the transition to be seamless. Um, lastly, we extended our hedging um, for uh, we we had hedging running until the end of September. So we've extended that through to uh, June next year. The purpose of our hedging is basically to give us resilience during during um, volatile iron ore prices. We don't ever intend to hedge 100% of, uh, uh, of our production. We are an iron ore equity. We understand where we fit in. Um, and uh, the, the benefits of the Phoenix New Hall acquisition to lower RC1 costs and that ability to keep on pushing out our hedging when it's opportunistic to do so is um, we believe is highly valuable to uh, to shareholder value. 
So that's all I've really got to say. Um, um, I'm really pleased and really proud of the Fenex team for, for another solid quarter. And um, just like to open it up, Danica, for any questions that, uh, that people may have. Perfect, thanks, Rob. Uh, so yeah, so as Rob said, if you wanna ask a question, you can type it into the Q&A feature down the bottom of the screen. Um, thank you for sending through questions via email as well. Uh, we'll kick off with a, a uh, hotly asked question, I suppose, on the dividends. Uh, it says, FedEx's dividend policy provides that the company will distribute between 50 and 80% of after-tax profits as fully frank dividends, uh, subject to the availability of franking credits. When uh, will a decision on the full year dividend be announced? Yeah, I'm sure that's a, uh, an interesting question for, for most shareholders, particularly super funds, et cetera. Um, look, we have to uh, announce our full year results uh, by the end of August. So uh, at that same time, we'll be declaring a dividend. Um, so that, that'll be the time frame there. We're not going to try and pre-announce it. It'll be with our full year results, which are due by the end of August. It says the average grade ship for the June quarter was 62.1% um, for fines and 63.6% for lump products, as you mentioned, which re uh, represents some of the highest grade iron ore in Australia. How does this affect the end user and Fenex securing, securing a premium price for its product? Well, there's, there's two reasons, really. There's one about environmental emissions. Obviously, the higher the grade, the less the impurities. That, that's um, everywhere in the world. There's, there, there's more emission targets being set or, or reductions in emissions targets. So we could really benefit uh, on that. Uh, we do have that green element to us because of our grade and our, our low impurities. The other thing is really it's about um, the blast furnace efficiency. So a blast furnace is, is sized on a cubic metre basis. The higher the grade you put in, the more productive that steel, um, uh, that blast furnace is, and that gives benefits to the uh, producer as well because they, they produce more end product, which is steel. Stuart's asked a question on um, how is your labour availability and costs going in this tight labour market and inflationary environment? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, everyone knows WA is uh, is uh, got a major skilled labour shortage. Uh, we're we're lucky in a way that our project is relatively small as far as a workforce goes. We employ about two hundred people uh, on the Iron Ridge project, um, both at the mine and at the port. Um, so it's not a a huge community. Um, I like to think of it as a close community. I mean, certainly no one's a number in our organisation. They're all a name. People know each other. And that helps to build camaraderie and makes it a decent workplace for people to, to, to work in. And given also that more than half of that workforce is Geraldton based as well. So it's a, a it's a um, a residential position rather than a fly-in, fly-out position. That certainly helps with uh, retention. And those beautiful new trucks that you see in, in my background there, um, uh, certainly they're a pleasure to drive, and um, that also helps um, to retain drivers uh, in particular when they've got uh, brand-new gear or very close to brand-new gear, all state-of-the-art um, and pretty fancy. Yeah, yeah. sweet ride. <laughs> <laughs> on the um, on the haulage transaction, um, there was a question on this, so I'll ask it now. When will the Phoenix New Hall transaction be completed and additional cash flows accruing from the transaction be realised for Phoenix? Okay. okay, that's a good question. Now, look, we're, we're going through the last conditions precedent, um, which really are related to um, the financing arrangements of Phoenix New Hall being assumed by Phoenix. Uh, or Phoenix uh, at, uh, at the top line. So that's just paperwork, really. I don't, I don't see that as a major issue. It's certainly the transaction's imminent as far as completion goes. The, the interesting thing about the transaction was that it's essentially a lockbox transaction. So any cash flow that's generated at the moment is, is retained by Phoenix New Hall, the entity, uh, and, and is 100% will eventually be 100% owned by Fenex, and therefore, uh, so that cash flow is already accumulating at the moment and will be reflected in our September quarter results. 
Okay, and what about the reduction in costs, which was expected to be ten dollars per ton? And do you think that's going to? Yeah, um, I mean, we we uh, anticipate that. It's pretty straightforward. Obviously, we take over full ownership of uh, of, of the fleet. Uh, the ownership costs uh, are uh, not C one costs. Um, uh, so the, they'll disappear uh, previously. We, so it's no use paying ourselves a premium or, or a profit margin in there. So that profit margin uh, will be captured um, uh, and the, the requirement for capital recovery will dissipate. Okay. Um, and on the, the growth opportunities mentioned in the quarterly um, <clears throat> that pertain to the flexibility that's been unlocked by this transaction, um, but also... I guess I'm combining two questions here, sorry, um, yeah. bear with me. Uh, the acquisition um, that you've touched on about um, exploration development or production projects that would leverage the company's existing mining and port operations. Is there any update you can provide us on how those growth opportunities are progressing? That's a very leading question and we'll get in trouble <laughs> with the ASX. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but look, we're, we're very much moving towards um, uh, focusing on these acquisitions. It's been one of our areas uh, of focus for some time. Obviously, the Phoenix New Hall acquisition means that we now have a full mine to port uh, solution that's 100% owned by Phoenix. So the benefits of any acquisition are going to be captured wholly and solely by Phoenix shareholders. So we are continuing to look. We're very prudent in the way that we go about that. Well, obviously, the, the simplest way would be to find something of similar quality and a, a, in similar geographical region as Iron Ridge. That's quite a difficult task because Iron Ridge is really one out of the box, um, but it does have its uh, limitations as far as size and scale goes. So that's a, a, a strong focus at the moment and will continue to be um, and all I can say to shareholders is what's this space. Very diplomatic. Well done. Um, so uh, there's a question that's come through on, um, you know, where do you see the iron ore prices going from here and why? I guess this ties into probably, you know, the, the question on hedging and the benefits of extending any price protection there. Could you speak to both if you've got a view? Yeah, okay. Well, look, you know, uh, the... Uh, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know where the iron ore price is going to go. I think Phoenix have managed the iron ore price volatility extremely well. We're, we're one of the few, um, well, the only Midwest iron ore producer that's been able to ride out the, uh, the bumps along the road. Um, and that's been A, because of our hedging policy and B, because of our, our, our high grade um, and our ability to, to, to own most of the infrastructure and, and all of the infrastructure now. So that, 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 that's one point to be quite consistent on. Um, and um, the other part, Danica, was? And um, well, you've answered them both really. So there's just a few questions on, you know, where you think the, um, the, yeah, the iron oil price yeah. is. Yeah, look, on. you know, the iron oil price has weakened a little bit. We all know that, we all see that. There's so many moving parts. Um, you know, China COVID closures, um, you know, uh, Russia, Ukraine. Uh, all I can tell you is that where we do get some confidence is that on the supply side of the equation, there's been very little reaction from the, from, from the, the majors. So they've got pretty consistent um, production without it being incrementally much higher. So um, that gives you some certainty as far as supply goes. So it becomes a pure demand story. And, you know, that that's, um, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of moving parts in that demand story uh, at the moment. But we, we feel um, very confident in the long-term future. Demand for iron ore and uh, the requirement for steel, and particularly in the use for infrastructure rebuilds, et cetera, in the U.S., in China, in, in Southeast Asia, and potentially even Europe. Yeah. So um, Matt's asked a question. He, said, well, he says, well done, Rob, um, first. Uh, and do you expect C1 uh, cost range to be between $70 and $80 Australian? Yes, yes, we do. But uh, again, it's not a simple equation. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you saw with this quarter, uh, our costs were up 
you know, nearly $10 a ton uh, on, on, on the previous quarter. And, and that was driven really by um, diesel uh, prices mainly. Um, you know, the, the prices for diesel, I think, averaged over, over $2. I think it's $2.05 per litre. Uh, our feasibility study used $1.30. Um, so we've had to absorb that cost. By the way, we're not alone. I mean, every single producer, whether they're in iron ore, whether they're in um, in other commodities, uh, even manufacturing, have had to absorb that cost rise. So we're um, we're not alone there. Um, and you know, all things being equal, as I said, we we do expect that step change movement down in our C one costs uh, solely off the benefit of the of the Phoenix New Hall transaction. Matt's also asked, um, the, the March quarter was lower on volume. Were there any other factors at play here? No, well, I mean, we do, when we calculate our C1 costs, um, we uh, we do take into account inventory builds and stuff like that and, and inventory movement. So, and the one thing about our business and the way it was con configured from day dot is that uh, a, a very large proportion of our costs are variable costs. So they move... That, um, and, and very little of them are fixed costs. So we, we're not tied to if we don't produce a certain amount, or then then things um, costs rise dramatically. Um, that will be in play if we ever half production. Hopefully, that will never happen because that would bring about um, repricing negotiations with our contractors. Uh, again, some of that's mitigated by the fact we now own our largest contractor. Uh, wholly, um, but you know we we do have a highly variable cost structure. We did that on purpose when we when we started the operation. Okay, Andrew's asked a question um, on uh, the ex like the expiration the Faros projects tenements. Sorry, Faros yeah. project tenements. Uh, you mentioned that Fenex is actively recruiting um, an exploration team to investigate the potential at the Faros project tenements. How is this progressing? Okay, well, first of all. Uh, me as manager director could see that we've been quite slow uh, 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 on getting this um, uh, this exploration initiative off off the ground. Um, we have been focused on our, our operations first and foremost. Obviously, the Phoenix New Hall um, consolidation um, wasn't something that just appeared out of nowhere. That that was probably a good solid six months' work involved in that. Um, so, and. As Stuart alluded to in his question before, I mean, uh, the labour market in WA is tough, it's hard, and particularly at that um, professional technical level to try and get um, the right people. So, sure, we could have gone out and just um, got third parties in there or contractors to start doing work on there, but we, we realised that this wasn't a, a short-term game, it's a long-term game. And, and I suppose the board in its entirety has decided that we're far better to build that um, knowledge base up in-house rather than out of house, I suppose. So that's why it's been so slow. We are getting close to, to, um, to uh, finding the right people. Um, and, you know, we hope that there'll be some, um, some movement on the ground uh, in the not too distant future. Well, we, we wanted to keep it quite short today. Um, there's a few, few questions and comments that have come through just basically saying, um, hi, Rob, good job. Thanks, David, <laughs> sending that through. Um, is Thanks, there any David must be a relative. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we definitely, um, that was one we prepared earlier. So <laughs> um, is there any final um, sort of parting comments that you wanted to leave everybody with before we um, close off the webinar? Uh, well, just to say that we, we continue to do what we say we're going to do. We're, we're riding the lumps and bumps of uh, and dips and, and rises in the iron ore price, uh, in the diesel price, but we've got a good solid foundation. We've, we've got our hedging policy in place. We've got our dividend policy in place. Our balance sheet is very strong. So we've got $102 million of cash in, in the bank. So, um, you know, uh, we're going to be around for quite a while. Um, and hopefully we can we can do that next acquisition that, that that builds on the synergistic benefits of the Phoenix New Hall acquisition. Absolutely, well said. So thank you to everyone who joined today. We will, as always, uh, be putting a replay video out on the company's website uh, in due course. 
we'll close it off there. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Danica.